you can change your life by believing in yourself because we're you're gonna what do they say you're gonna miss every every shot you don't take is a shot that you miss yeah welcome back to the podcast i started this podcast as a way to help black men in all aspects of our lives studies show on average we lose 2.8 years of our life when we're under heavy stress and i think we can gain those 2.8 years back if we express ourselves healthily Stick with me as I interview therapists, doctors, advocates, activists, and friends about how we can be better as black men and as a black community. If you're not subscribed to us on YouTube and following us on Instagram and TikTok, you'll definitely want to do that. Without further ado, let's get into the episode. Look, man, we are here with Jason Phillips. It's about to be a really good episode. We've been having some good conversation um, before the episode, so the energy is yeah. flowing. Jason, you are a licensed therapist, your yes, confidence sir. expert, and you're also a safe haven healer. <laughs> yeah, you're also a safe haven healer. First of all, welcome. I'm glad to have you in person. We've done a, a we've done a virtual episode before, right? Yeah. But in person is different. It's just not. Bro, we, I was excited yeah. to get here. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Seriously, like, man, I respect the platform so much. So. Yeah, nah, I appreciate you being here, bro. I appreciate you being here. This is a long time coming, so this is gonna be a really good episode, man couple of things. Um, if you're listening to this episode, this is this may be the first time we're saying it, uh, depending on what's going on. But we are teaching again. We're bringing back our free webinar, How to Find a Dope Black Therapist. So we're going to go through the steps that you need to take to maximize your search um, and minimize the amount of time that you're searching for a therapist to make sure that you find a dope therapist. So if you're interested in that, if you know a black man that's interested in that, uh, sign up. It's going to be in the link in our IG bio. We'll also have it in the podcast description. So definitely sign up. And if you can't, you know, if you're not on IG, if you're not on social media, just go to expressyourselfblackman.com slash links. And then you'll see the link to register for the webinar. Again, it's free. You do not have to be a black man. Um, but if you're a black man, obviously it's for you because that's the space. So we'll be taking you through the steps that you need to uh, go through to find a black therapist. And then also... At the end of the webinar, we'll be given the opportunity to get connected with Safe Haven Healers inside of our platform. So definitely take advantage of that. So without further ado, man, let's get into that. Yeah, let's, let's, get, let's, let's, <laughs> let's chop it up, bro. Let's chop it up. So one of the things, um, one of the things that I'm seeing a lot, right, is that uh us as black men, right? Mm. Um, we're like grinding ourselves to death, right? So we feel like we have to attain or reach a certain level of success. And because of that, we're like pushing ourselves extremely hard. Yeah. And um, we think that when we get to this point of success, that will automatically be good. Yeah. And I'm slowly <clears throat> but surely realizing, eh, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm hitting certain things. Things are happening for me. And I'm realizing like, yo, bro. You know, this ain't really hitting like how you thought it was going to hit. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Like, so I just want to expand on that a little bit. Can you can you break that down? What that is, where that comes from and like what we could do to kind of deal with that a little bit. So on a basic level, right, mm -hmm. I think we feel like if I have more money, I'll be happier. Mm -hmm. That's on a basic level. But then on the, the man level, we feel like I can heal my trauma through being more successful. Mm. <laughs> so that's what's happening. Break that down. So Break that down. We go through, I can hear my trauma between. I go through yeah. a breakup. You know what? Let me put in some more hours. Let me get fly. I go through a breakup. I'm hurt. So let me heal my emotions by getting a side chick. So next time, I won't be so hurt. Right? So we don't want to be vulnerable. We're feeling like, oh, I can protect myself by doing this. Mm. And it seems like it's easy but you're not going to get the long-term results through trying to cover up your trauma through being more successful, making more money, having more status. I think as men, a lot of times we don't want to talk about what we've been through. And you know that through your platform. Yeah. So it's easier to look good, right? Look good on the outside, but not feel good at all inside. Mm -hmm. That's what's been happening. Yeah, bro. And you know what's interesting too, what I've realized though, that uh, every time we have this conversation, or most of the times when we have this conversation, a lot of men will say, but society reinforces this idea. Like women will say that you ain't poop if you're not making a certain number, you know, a certain, certain amount of money. 
And then my family only wants me to provide and all these different kind of things. And so that kind of reinforces the idea that as a man, you're only as good as what you provide financially, what you what you provide materialistically, right? Um, and so it's hard for us as men to kind of like disassociate from that and, and start to understand who we are and what, you know, actually is going to help us to heal because we've for so long we've been taught that we need to overcompensate, mm-hmm. right? When we feel like we have a lack of anything, right? So if I'm going through a breakup and I feel like my ego has been shot, like you said, now I got to make sure I'm doing good at work. I got to make sure I'm getting all this money. I got to make sure I'm fly. I got to make sure my body's right. I got to, yeah. I'm on my revenge tour. Yeah, you know what basically. I'm saying? Like I got to make sure nobody can ever say anything about me ever again and overcompensate in that way. So how do we kind of break out of that? Because I feel like it's kind of reinforced in society and the way we view men. It is. Mm-hmm. So I was having a conversation with the man yesterday and mm-hmm. he was saying, this was actually like a couple session and he was saying, look, people don't care about men's feelings. Mm. So he wholeheartedly believed that, even talking to a therapist, he said, people don't care about men's feelings. So I have to do this. I can't be vulnerable. I can't show empathy to my kids in the way that you want me to. Mm-hmm. So I will say that there is some truth that society has reinforced us to be more successful, to lead, to provide, to protect. However, the the quality of the person who you're dating or who you're looking for, they may want you to be more vulnerable. So that's not all women that are going to say, oh, you got to have this, you got to have that. Like women want to be, you know, cuddled, courted. They want you to talk to them, be their best friend. And you can't do that if you're only about the grind and the hustle. Mm. That's a fact. I ain't gonna lie. I tell dudes that all the time. I, I try to tell them. I'm like, yo, listen, man. I don't know what women y'all are listening to, <laughs> but I really do advise you to, you know, seek out other women uh, and make sure that you're monitor- monitoring what you're seeing on social media because it's real out here. There's a lot of men, a lot of people just in general that are really warped and are mm-hmm. stuck in this whole gender war thing and when you actually get outside in real life and see how people interact with each other it's really not like that for the most part you know what i'm saying like a lot of the conversations i see around the gender war stuff is really just on social media when i talk to women around me or like the the women that are around me that that you know the few the very few that are around me there's not really much like debates and like arguments you know what i'm saying like it's like that i don't really see that and so I'm really struggling to see how outside in the real world that like gender war stuff really plays out. I really only, I really primarily see it on social media. And then what I'll see in the real world is kind of like some of our friends, you know, or some of my friends or even myself Mm -hmm. going through trauma in relationships where, you know, certain breakups or this may happen, right? But that's, you know, for me, I kind of feel like that's normal. I feel like we all have to go through certain things in our relationships and we learn from it. That doesn't necessarily mean that we're uh, in, a, in a war against, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, the whole men versus women or a black man versus black uh, women, that, I feel like social media is just like really exaggerating that and mm-hmm. it's a lot of clickbait. Mm-hmm. Yeah. True, yeah. very, very yeah. true. Yeah, listen, man, these podcasts gotta, <laughs> they gotta get them clips off. Yeah, they gotta they doing get them it. Cli- they taking that that one part because it sounds good. Mm-hmm. But it, you, when you're in a relationship, when you're married, when you're around other healthy individuals, you know it's not like that. Right. No, that's a tr- that's a fact. One of the things we were just talking about, mm-hmm. and I was saying, I'm just gonna mention it because I want to see if anybody in the audience has any insight. I don't see a lot of married couples mentoring couples that are like trying to get to that place. I've been, you know, I'm in a space right now where I'm going to kind of like, I'm, you know, trying to transition to that place. Mm -hmm. I just see my man's proposed congrats to Keanu and Naja. Um, And it was a really heartwarming uh, environment. And then I started thinking to myself like, okay, how do I get prepared to get there? Well, the best course of action I should take is if somebody's married, you know, I should have conversations with them. Right. And I could talk to my parents and all that Mm kind of stuff. But I just don't see a lot of like, Where's that content at? You know what I'm I saying? Think, like, I think because married people want to keep it in-house. Mm, That's what it really boils down to. They don't want to put all their business out there in the street. And not okay. saying like they're doing it purposely because it's like they don't want to be vulnerable. But it's like, we got a good thing. We know y'all on some other stuff out there. <laughs> <laughs> and we not trying to mess up what we got. It's kind of yeah. like, yeah. you know, when I was growing up, uh, you know, I'm, I'm from the D. I'm from Detroit. So... Mm-hmm. 
we didn't let everybody in our house mm-hmm. unless there was a certain level of trust. Right. Hey, if you don't know them, if it's not family, you just don't right. be letting people come in like that. Right, right, right. right and right, I think right. that's what's happening with marriages, okay. with married couples. They like, hey, unless we vetted you, we know that you're solid, you're not messy. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna share something with you. And then you twist my words and make it seem like I said this, because that's what happened. I was talking to another married couple, me and my wife, a few uh, weeks ago, and the married couple said, yeah, I said this to somebody, and they twisted it around like I said something totally different that would have been messy had it got out. Mm-hmm. And they were like, I didn't say that at all. Mm-hmm. And that's what can happen yeah, when yeah, people, yeah, 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 they're yeah. listening to see, oh, how can I how can I turn this conversation into gossip? Ooh. Yeah. Oh, mm. <laughs> so that's why I marry people like you know you know. No, nah, that's true. You got you got to <laughs> practice discernment with who you talk to for real. Yeah, that's why I like. Yeah, I, I I wholeheartedly believe in keeping certain things in your relationship, in house. Mm-hmm. Um, not even just if you're married. I just think in general you should th- you should keep a lot of things in your house. If you and your partner going through stuff and somebody asks you, oh, how are you and so and so. I'm good. We always good. Right. We are always yeah. good. You ain't never going to catch me. Yo, bro, I can't believe this. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm not. Nope. Because as soon as you, that's when people think that they can start to insert themselves. And now people feel some type of way for you over something that happened with you and your partner, even though y'all going to reconcile anyway. Mm-hmm. And it just becomes a whole thing. And I don't need you. You know, you're not my couple's therapist. Yeah. That's what I have exactly. my couple's therapist for. You feel yep. me? So we'll go through it in, in counseling. And we'll handle it that way, but we don't need to be telling everybody, oh, we in a bad space right now. Like, what's that going to do? You feel me? It's really not going to help for the most part. You're just going to get a lot of outside opinions on things that people don't have all the facts on anyway. And you might get outside opinions on stuff that people wouldn't even do themselves. True. You know, Mm. they tell tell you what what sounds good, right? Because they telling you the stuff that they wish they would have done, but they haven't done it. True. That's very... Yo, people will really tell you stuff yeah, yeah. and know damn well they would never do that. Or have never done it. Yo. Once I started to learn just in different aspects of life, when people started to advise me on doing things and then they get into the same situation and do something totally different, I'll still listen mm-hmm. and I'll still talk, but I don't I don't give it, it the, same the same level yeah. of credit no more. Yeah, of course not. Of no. course not. All right, I'm interrupting this podcast episode to let you guys know to leave a review on the podcast. Please, 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 if you are listening to this episode and you're finding value in this episode, you're enjoying the conversation or you've enjoyed a previous episode or conversation and it's safe to operate your phone right now, please leave us a review. Your review is a free and easy way to support us and it helps us reach more people like you. We're on a mission to build a stronger, more connected black community, starting with black men. And you can help us on that mission by taking a minute out of your day to leave a review. Your review helps us generate more listeners, which in turn generates more revenue, allowing us to expand the platform even further. So please take a few seconds out of your day. I know you're busy. I understand. I know you're doing a lot, but it will help us greatly if you would just take a few seconds out of your day to leave a review right now. Did you leave a review yet? All right, let's get back to the episode. Yo, man, I want to segue a bit. One of the yeah. things that you talk about a lot is confidence. Mm-hmm. You had a quote that you put up. You said, confidence is so underrated. It can literally change your life. I believe that's what you were saying. Yeah. Um, can you explain that? Yeah, I'm going to give you an example, right? Mm-hmm. Because, well, one, confidence, you believing in yourself, believing in your skill set, your abilities, you know, having pushing that self doubt to the side, mm-hmm. you can change your life. I'll give you an example like this. Let's say you want to make more money. You want to do a career change. You want to promote. If you don't believe that you can actually get that next level position, mm-hmm. you won't apply. Mm-hmm. So I had that one time. I was working with somebody. And they were like, "Yeah, you know, I, a position came open. I didn't apply." And then my boss came and said, "Well, you know, you would have got it." But because they didn't believe in themselves enough to even apply for the position, they didn't give themselves an opportunity to be told no. Mm. So that's what I say when you can change your life by believing in yourself because we're you're gonna what do they say? You're gonna miss every every shot you don't take is a shot that you miss. Yeah. 
Yeah, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Exactly. So that's what happened. Oh, my God. How many times do we say no to ourselves before we even get the actual no? Right. You know what I'm saying? Right, before we get the actual no. So when you believe in yourself, and you have to believe in yourself, it can't be false hope from somebody else gassing you up. Right. You have to go out there and try, even if you're scared, even if you're nervous, even if you're going to stumble over your words, even if you're going to look awkward, sound awkward, feel anxiety, feel stressed. You may not sleep after you pitch this idea or after you shoot your shot with this girl. It's okay as long as you still do it because how are you going to change your life and your situation if you don't try? Mm, mm, man, man, we're talking about yeah. growth right now. <laughs> that's why about confidence, growth. you can change your life by just believing in yourself. Now, nah, that's, that's a fact. I feel like a lot of people tell themselves no before they actually get a no. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really harming um, your growth as an individual, you know? Like, you, you're staying in a certain position, not because you you can't do it, but because you believe you can't do it. Mm-hmm. Those are two completely different things, Yeah. right? Like, your ability to do it really does rely in how much you believe in yourself. So then from a therapeutic standpoint, right, uh, if you're talking about taking action, mm-hmm. if you don't believe that you can, so the thoughts that you're feeding yourself are telling you not to do something, mm-hmm. you're going to feel all of that stress, feel all of that frustration, mm-hmm. anger, shame, embarrassment, and then you're not going to do anything. Yeah. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. You know what one of my favorite quotes are mm-hmm. um, from Confucius? It's he who says he can and he who says he cannot are usually both right. And I always keep that quote with me because it helps me to reframe how I speak to myself. Because if I say I can do it, I can do it. it Maybe take me some time, but I'm going to do it, right? If I keep telling me, telling myself that I can do it. So that's really the, the, the power of manifestation, right? It's just the belief in yourself that you can do it. And even if you don't believe that you can do it, you have to keep reminding yourself that, no, I can, Damn. right? But if you tell yourself, nah, I can't, <laughs> well, then you can't. You're you know going to start saying? to act in that same manner. True. Exactly. That's how you're programming your subconscious to act. That's a really powerful tool. That's why the affirmation... Oh, my Lord Jesus, man. <laughs> That's why the affirm. Yeah, bro. Yo, listen, man. That's why the affirmations are so important, bro. That's why we post the affirmations every weekday, right? Them boys hit. Yo, nah, I'm telling you, right? Because I'm most of the times the affirmations I'm posting because... It's something that has happened to me or a reminder that I know I'm going to need throughout the week. Mm-hmm. And so, yes, it's hitting for y'all, but it's hitting for me, too. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm I'm affirming myself through the platform, right? And I do that because I know there's certain things that I may be going through or certain things that I need to be reminded of. And so I'm affirming myself because I know I'm going to be on social media anyway. So why not make sure that I see certain things that are going to help me? to get to where it is that I need to go, right? And so that's what the affirmations are. I try to make sure that black men know like, yo, bro, you can do whatever it is that you want to do, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to be so hard on yourself. You don't have to decide that you have to be stuck here. There are a lot of different things that you can do to kind of navigate around what it is that you're going through, right? Man, we talked about confidence. And I know one of the things that black men are going to say is, yes, I know you're telling me to believe in myself, but I feel like uh, the people around me the reason why they believe in themselves is because they've had people around them that have believed in them. Yeah. Right? And right. so how important is it for black men to have people around them that can instill that level of belief in themselves as well? Can you speak to that? You got to be mindful of who you give your energy to, who mm-hmm. you let in. So I'll give you an example. Um, as a licensed therapist, we have to take tests to become licensed, get those credentials. I remember I wasn't fully licensed yet, just graduated, and a, a colleague at the time, I was about to take my test, and they were like, hey, you know, if you don't pass it the first time, it's okay. A lot of people don't. Mm-hmm. I was like, what? Like, I'm not a lot of people. Yeah, bro. right. Yeah, yeah I'm <laughs> here. I, right. I yeah. got with my boy who had just, another black male therapist, we had graduated. So we're studying side by side. We at Starbucks, Panera Bread. You know, we sharing notes, all of that stuff, mm-hmm. because we believed in each other. Mm-hmm. And we were like, we're not going to take this test and, and do it again and pay the two, three hundred. We were already manifesting the past exam, mm-hmm. first try. Mm-hmm. That's what happens when you have somebody in your circle who believes in you and who holds you accountable. Mm-hmm. So we both passed the exam the first time. Mm-hmm. So when you talk about the power of your social circle, that other colleague, I had to kind of distance myself yeah, from of them. Of course, yeah. Mm-hmm. And spend more time with people who 
are giving positive energy and who really believe in me and I believe in them. Mm -hmm. So if you feeling like, well, my circle is so so, or mm -hmm. you got to change it up. Nah, don't you... blame them. Change yourself. Ooh, ooh, yeah. ooh. <laughs> mm. Mm. That's it, man. Yeah. I'm a, I'm gonna keep it a stack. That's mm -hmm. real. That's very real. You got to practice discernment with the people that are around you. You know what I'm saying? Like for me personally, I have a lot of people that know me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, but we're not we're not close friends. Yeah. You know, I may see you on the blog and say it was good, but you're not you're not a you're not the homie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I'm sorry, bro. Like doesn't mean that I'm gonna treat you any different, but I just know when it comes time for me to really buckle down and do what I need to do is a is a small number of people that I'm gonna hit up. You feel me? Because I yeah. know that they're gonna they're gonna instill a certain level of belief in me and give me a certain energy and put me on a certain frequency, right? And I know when I hang with other people, I may not I may not get that same thing, right? And so I've been able to discern that, and I, that's something that I've been good at j from young. Um, and I didn't think of that as a skill, mm -hmm. but I'm realizing that a lot of people don't know how to practice discernment with the people that are closest to them. And so like you end up having a lot of people that you're associated with, but you're not really able to be vulnerable with. You're not able, really able to build real deep relationships with these people because um, especially for us as black men, we don't feel comfortable being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. We don't feel comfortable opening up and letting people know like, you know what, this is something I'm struggling with. I don't really feel this, this good about myself in this area or I'm going through this and I need some support, you feel me? And so we don't end up having deep, like intimate relationships with other black men. And I feel like that's very, very important. That's been very important for me as I'm going through this journey of trying to uh, build this platform. As you go through things, um, as you grow anybody, regardless of if it's building a business, anything, right? Like you're gonna go through stuff. Right? Yeah, if you don't yeah. have people around you that you can fall back on and get that support and know that they have your best interests at heart, that they're not going to take what you say and try to invalidate you or judge you or use it against you. If you don't have people around you that are like that, it becomes a very lonely walk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's why I feel like the support network, that's what we have inside of Safe Haven is so important because, bro, a lot of black men don't have friends that they can really have deep conversations with, bro. No. And I didn't know that that was a thing. <laughs> because with my bros, I'd be like, yo, I love you. Yeah. You feel me? Yo, bro, I need a hug. Yo, let's pull up tomorrow because, I, you know, I'm going through some things right now. You know, God's put me through some fire right now. Look, yeah. what's up, bro? I need y'all to pull up. I need a hug. I, I, need us, I need us to sit down, eat. Let's talk a little bit. You feel me? We can have those conversations. We can cry in front of each other. We can chill. We can hug each other. We can embrace each other. And we can tell each other like, yo, bro, this is what I need from you. And it's not going to come off as, oh, bro, you gay. No homo. Right, Pause. Right, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, so I feel like a lot of black men don't really have that and struggle when it comes time for them to seek out support because they've never known how to. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? I know what you, yeah. Because I've been blessed, like me and my uh, tight circle, we've been tight since high school. So like mm -hmm. 25 years mm -hmm. and no real fallouts or nothing like that. But a lot of people aren't like that. Right. So right. when you have black men who you can open up to and they're not going to weaponize what you say, you can be vulnerable, it's a different feeling. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the brothers that I work with, they don't have that. Right. But I'm like, well, who do you talk to? It may be their girl. It may be a family member. But it's usually two, maybe three. Mm -hmm. That they, you know, and that three is kind of wobbly. Yeah, three is like <laughs> that third person like... Yeah, Listen, the third person wobbly. like, damn, I really don't want to go to some, but right. if I have to, but you feel me? the research shows that when it comes to managing depression, anxiety, social support is high on the list mm -hmm. as far as one of the protective factors that you want. Yeah, yeah. And one of the things that I've seen in Safe Haven too, um, people really join Safe Haven for the support network a lot of the times. Like yeah. I thought when I first built it, I thought people were really going to join for the healers and like mm -hmm. that was going to be the main thing. But a lot of people really join for the support network. They join because they know we're going to have the support groups, that they're going to be able to get that that help from not only a, a, a black therapist in the group, but also they're going to see other black men in there. And then they're also going to have a space where they can feel comfortable sharing what they're going through because they just haven't had that. And I didn't know how prominent that was they love it yeah i didn't know how prominent that was in our in our community but a lot of men are joining safe haven because of that support network because they know they're going to be able to connect with other 
black men. And I love it, man, because I think I think we really do need it, man. I really do think we need it. So again, I'm going to uh, let you guys know we're having a webinar. If you guys are interested, you're trying to get connected with a healer, you're trying to get connected with a black therapist, you don't know um, how to go about that process or you've been having some struggles with that, sign up for the free webinar. We'll take you through the process, show you exactly where you need to go, what you need to look out for. Um, and how you can kind of like expedite that a little bit so that you can find a dope black therapist, not just any black therapist. We're talking about a dope black therapist that can actually help you, right? Because there's a lot of black therapists that don't mean that they dope, right? So we're going to help you to go through your process, refine your search. Um, so sign up. The link is going to be in our bio. It's going to be in the description of the podcast. It will, uh, if you're not on Instagram or, you're, you know, you can't find a description for some reason, expressyourselfblackman.com slash links. And then it'll be one of the first buttons there. You just click it and sign up. So definitely tap in. We'll give you the opportunity to also connect with a safe haven healer inside of our platform. Man, 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 man. I had a thought. I'm going to go back. I'm going to get, I'm going to come back to it though. Um, you're a safe haven healer, yes, right? Sir. You've been working with some of the men inside of the platform. And I love it. And you love it. Okay, <laughs> listen, well, listen, we love that. All right. <laughs> we love that. We love that for sure. But you've been working with some of the men inside of the platform. You're fully booked right now. Right. Yes, you're fully booked right now. Um, I wanted to ask you, what are some of the pain points that you're seeing, or some of the things that the men are coming to you um, that are from Safe Haven? What are some of the things that they're coming mm -hmm. to you with? I'll be honest. So it's a, there's a variety, but the ones that stand out would be relationship issues mm -hmm. and lack of social support. Mm -hmm. Those are the two that if I had to pick what stands out. Now, from those relationship issues and lack of social support, it breeds depression. It breeds more anxiety. Mm -hmm. And then some brothers have had a lot of, you know, maybe childhood trauma, mm -hmm. corporate trauma on the job. Mm -hmm. But the the major things are like relationship stuff. Relationship stuff. Yeah. Man, you I, I remember I remember my thought now. Uh -huh. One of the things that you were saying, and I know we I do this personally as a black man, one of the people that I confide in a lot is my girl. Mm -hmm. But I have to be cautious about that because what I realize is that when me and my girl are at odds, it becomes very hard. You know yeah. what I'm saying? If that's the only person that I'm going to when I'm going through stuff, now me and her at odds, what happens when I need to talk to somebody about what's going on with me and her? I can't come to you about, exactly. the, about you. You <laughs> right, feel me? Right, like, right, that's right. not going to work, right? And so I feel like a lot of brothers struggle with that too like we have that we have that internal struggle we don't really talk about it but i realized like man bro mm -hmm. bro the other day bro mm -hmm. i was doing a we you know i interview every safe haven healer before they get on the platform just to make sure like all right everything is cool that they meet the level the standard that we want inside of the platform i interviewed a, uh, a, a potential safe haven healer and before i start the interview before i start anything i always ask people like how you doing how's everything right just yeah. check the energy and this brother was very honest. He was like, yo, I'm not going to lie. Things are going well with business, but acutely, I'm really struggling. Mm. And I was like, okay, what's up? You want to talk about it? Like, what's good? And he started talking. And we tell me, like, we started, we, we deep in the conversation. Yeah. He's telling me about all this stuff that's going on. And out of respect for him and everything that's going on in his situation, I'm not going to, you know, release any details. Right. But he's telling me all these things that are going on, right? And he's like, you know, um, it's really bothering him to the point that, you know, he's crying. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And he just, he needed that space. We yeah. both needed that. Yeah. You feel me? Because I'm starting to tell him stuff that's right, going on. Right. And I'm like, you know what, bro? We're going we gonna to table the interview. <laughs> yeah. We're going to talk about that some other time. Let's just use this space. You feel me? Because God connected us in this time and we both needed it. And so we just kept talking. And, and I realized like, yo, bro, like one of the reasons why I really needed this is because I'm going through stuff and I don't really like, yes, I have my bros, but when you're going through stuff with, with your partner, sometimes it's hard to, you don't, like you said, you want to keep things in house mm -hmm. and you don't want to necessarily tell your bros or your family because you don't want them to yeah, feel some type at, of way about you. You know what I'm yeah. saying? All that kind of stuff. So it becomes very difficult mm -hmm. when you're going through those type of things. And as a black man, we already internalize so much and you start internalizing that. Yeah. You feel me? It can be very, very hard. So what do you do? Saying all that to, to line this up, what do you do when you have a black man that's like, has like two, three people, one of them being his girl, right. but he's going through the relationship issues, like you said, he's struggling with the relationship, can't really talk to his girl or his man or whoever it is yeah. about it. What do you do in those situations? How can you help him through that? 
Man, so the first thing, I mean, it's tough. Yeah, the first I know. thing mm-hmm. I'm going to do is talk to him about we might need to increase the frequency of our meetings. Okay. So if we're doing bi-weekly, we may need to do weekly for a bit. Okay. If we've been checking in monthly, we might need to up that. Mm-hmm. Just so they have a healthy outlet and then we can kind of have more time to game plan. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Second thing I'm going to do, ask him, what conversations are you having with yourself? Ooh. Meaning, how are you perceiving this situation? Mm-hmm. Because I want to know the narrative that they're telling themselves about themselves. Mm-hmm. And then we, from there, I can get more data and see, oh, see, that's irrational. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not, I'm not pointing yeah, my oh, yeah, you're not, Yo, bro, you're <laughs> irrational right now. Nah, I know you're but, not. But, you know, but mm-hmm. I'm, we can now, I can listen to what they're not saying. Mm-hmm. And from that, I can help them formulate their own I guess you would say um, solutions to right. their situations. Right, so right, right. We're going right, to right. increase their level of support. Mm. We're going to look at, you know, their thought processes, where's their mindset at. And then we're going to work on having some other healthy outlets. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. before you, even aside from black men not having social support, if you're going to therapy or you're seeking services to heal trauma, mm-hmm. before you start to do that trauma work, we want to make sure that you have some healthy outlets mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. you may go away from a session feeling like, man, this was tough. And now I don't want you just going back to the crib with all of these racing thoughts and emotions with no way to uh, self-soothe. Yeah, yeah. no, that that is a fact. <laughs> yeah. Man. That is a fact. I've had some sessions with my therapist and I'm like, man. And she will know when I'm going through some stuff because normally when I join a session, like I'm smiling and I'm, you know, everything is cool. Yeah. But I have certain things that I do, like I'll put my hand, you know what I'm saying? Like I have cues that just, mm-hmm. and it's not I'm doing it on purpose, it's right. just like I'm I'm going through stuff. And she'll be like, oh, what's up? What's going on? Where you want to start today? Mm-hmm. Right now, I'll just start telling her. Then, But towards the end of the session, I start feeling better, but it's still heavy, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So that, that, that social support, that support network is very, 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 very important, like you said, man. It's very yeah. important. We got to have that for post-sessions. That's why we have it inside of Safe Haven, because... As count, you know, contrary to popular belief, coaching, therapy ain't enough. You know what mm, I'm saying? No. Like Heck you got no. it's not enough, bro. The way I always describe it is therapy is like going to class in college, right? You right. get a 50 minute lecture, a 60 minute <laughs> lecture, one maybe an hour and 30, whatever the case may be. But afterwards, if you don't apply what you learned, if you don't have people around you that you're studying with that are feeding you the information mm-hmm. that you're you're able to, you know, digest then it's going to be very hard for you to remember and learn and grow, yeah. right? And that's the point of being in college. That's the point of being therapy, the coaching, mm-hmm. right? So um, you have to be able to have people around you that are going through the same things or that can speak to your experience and give you some type of knowledge, some type of wisdom, guidance, support. And that's why you need to have that support network. So again, if you guys want to tap in, please, please, please sign up for the webinar. Let's see how we can get you um, a therapist, but also... Uh, connected with some some brothers that can be like minded mm. and help you through your healing journey as well. One of the things that you said is that you you've been loving it. Yeah. For the safe haven healer. <laughs> we're going we're going circle. We're going to double back to that. You know what I mean? Listen, man, I love to hear that. Right. So, can you explain um, first of all why? Yeah, and then so we'll go into the, the diversity. Question. Okay. So, safe haven. I mean, I don't know how many people are in the platform. Like I mean, two, two hundred, two yeah. plus two hundred plus. Not the diversity point, yeah. meaning mm-hmm. like you can have somebody who's twenty four. Or 44. Yeah, that's what I realized. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's a blessing, bro. That's dope. You yeah. can have somebody who works, you know, nine to five, or you have an entrepreneur who's been all around the world doing mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. That's really dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can have somebody who's been single for most of their life or somebody who's been married, you know, mm-hmm. and going through stuff. So the diversity mm-hmm. of the people in the platform. Mm-hmm. You know, black men, but it lets me know that you're capturing a wide net. Yeah, 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 yeah. Also, yeah. Mm-hmm. the second point of why I love it is because of the respect level when I'm meeting with these gentlemen. Mm, speak to that. So they already have, I mean, because, you know, I'm a black man, mm-hmm. there's that level of connection, mm-hmm. but they take what we're doing seriously. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'm always giving someone something to work on outside of just our session. Right. And typically, for the most part, I'm not going to say 100%, <laughs> yeah, 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 but yeah, people yeah. do follow through with those exercises. So yeah. the level of commitment with the Safe Haven members is pretty high. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. for somebody who enjoys what they do, you know, like to see somebody follow through on the actions or whatever we, we talked about, mm-hmm. that's rewarding because we're not doing this just for the money. Right, right, right. No, that's, that's I love to hear yeah. that, bro. What I've realized too is with the members that join Safe Haven, they've actually decided like, you know what, 
I'm either in the acceptance phase mm-hmm. or I'm in the action phase of my healing journey. We literally right. are, are developing two different plans for that, right? So if you're in the acceptance phase, basically that means that you're ready to kind of like seek that support, but you may not be ready to get into individual sessions, right? Yeah. So you'll have one plan that's for that inside of Safe Haven where you can get access to most of the platform but you're not gonna get access to the safe haven healers because you're not ready for that. Mm-hmm. Then you move over to the action plan when you're ready for that for action now, you're ready for like that real transformative, um, those transformative steps. Now you have access to like safe haven AI, which we've been um, developing, uh, which is in beta testing right now. Affirmation oh. generator, where you can create your own affirmations. You get access to the, to the safe haven healers program as well, right? Where you That's can that. do individual sessions with healers like yourself. Um, and so we split it that way because we realized like the members are coming in and um, they're in two different phases or a couple of different phases of their journey. But also, like you said, one of the things is that they've actually committed. It's like, yo, you know what? I know I need this help and I'm ready to do the work. And so let me see what I can do to make sure that I get the help that I need. How important is that though, bro? Because it's, I don't think people will speak to that enough. Man, it's important. So I had somebody... Um, once on, on my private side book and I have a, a series of questions I ask people. One is like, how ready are you? Mm-hmm. Super ready, not ready. But And they put not ready and then like in two minutes they canceled the, uh, the consultation. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, yep. so mm-hmm. basically like assessing that level of motivation is important because if you're not ready, you could potentially do yourself more harm. And what I mean by that is, let's say you're not ready, but you're like, you know what? I'm going to try out therapy. I'm going to try out coaching. I'm going to try out safe haven. You meet with somebody, you have a somewhat okay experience, but then you're like, you know what? It wasn't for me. So right. now in your mind, you're telling yourself that therapy doesn't work or mm-hmm. you're telling yourself that nobody understands me. Mm-hmm. But that's because you really weren't ready in that in that moment and maybe you didn't disclose that to whoever you were working with Mm -hmm. so it just reinforces the the narrative in your mind that you know nobody can help me yeah and that's where it could do more damage yeah no that's very very important to point out um you have to be in a stage where you're like you know what what i'm doing right now myself isn't enough Mm -hmm. right if you feel like yo what i'm doing right now to manage my mental health is good don't even seek therapy. What you seeking therapy for? If you good right now with your mental health and how you managing it, okay, cool, right? But if you feel like, you know what, there are extra steps that I can take and I really do want to sit down with somebody and I'm committed to doing the work, mm-hmm. pull up. You know what I'm saying? That's when it really is beneficial because now you're committed to making those changes, right? I, I, I kind of look at it similar to going to the gym. There are a lot of people every January. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know? That's the month. Hey, <laughs> I got this New Year's resolution. I'm going to yeah. chop 50 pounds. You know, I got me my Planet Fitness. Yeah. You know, they was running the $1 a month right. plan. I'm ready. I'm in there. You yeah. feel me? They all Planet Fitness from January 1st to January 3rd. You feel me? Then January 4th come around. You know what, bro? I could take a day off. Right. I've been in here for a couple of days. I don't really think I need to do it, go as hard as I've been going, right? And and after the end of January, they ain't ain't in the gym no more, right? So if you're going to be on that type of wishy-washy stuff, you know, you may not be ready yet. But if you're you're committed, if you're like, you know what, this is not just like a fad, it's not a trend for me, this is Mm -hmm. something that I really want, I really want to change my life, because it really will change your life. Like, that's not an exaggeration when I say that. Right? That's the reason why we push it so heavy is because I know what it's done for me and for the members in Safe Haven. Mm-hmm. I know you know what it's done for some of your people that you've worked with even outside of Safe Haven, right? So it's important for men to understand that this is something that can actually work. Therapy and work, and talking to a professional is something that can actually work if you work and if you allow it to work on you, right? A lot of men sometimes feel uncomfortable with the idea that I have something to work on. Mm-hmm. And I think it's because it's our, our emotions are attached to it, but we're not, if we look at the greats, right? Mm-hmm. If you look at the greats in any sport, they had somebody helping them. Tyson was at his best when he had, I don't know, the old white guy I don't coaching even, him. I don't remember. Do you, I, you, I know, oh, I know he looked like, but I don't know his name. Yeah, yeah I can't yeah. think of his name. Mm-hmm. You know, Floyd, he got his trainer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is it, is it, I think it's his pops. Yeah. His uncle, yeah. But he, Floyd is not Floyd without his pops. Right. Right. Jordan is not Jordan without Phil Jackson. Mm-hmm. Kobe the same, same way. Mm-hmm. You got to think, people are having 
people help them elevate to greatness. Yeah. So what makes you think that you going through life stressors, job stressors, relationship issues, family stuff, you just trying to navigate it by yourself? Talk to them. That doesn't make sense. Talk to them. My life got better when I hired a personal trainer. Talk to them. Therapist, Talk to coach, financial advisor. Come on now. Like all of these people to Come help on. me. Come on. You need a team, yeah. right? And who better to have on your team than somebody that is professionally equipped with the tools and resources to help you to grow and heal? It's kind of like you going to class, right? And you're mm -hmm. struggling. You know you're struggling in this class, but you will not seek a tutor. Mm. You go into class, you're paying the tuition, you're struggling with the homework, get you a tutor so you can pass and get the degree. Right. Yo. Don't be afraid to seek that type of help. Yeah. And one of the things, too, I want to I wanna add to this so that mm -hmm. to really drive the point home so man can understand is that um, a lot of times as men, right, like we just talked about earlier, like providing and trying to be successful and all these different kind of aspects. A lot of times we as men don't understand that one of the issues that we're having and the reasons why we're not able to get to where we want to get to is because we have like all of these blocks, all these mindset blocks. We're telling ourselves no. We don't mm -hmm. feel like we're actually capable. All these different things that are going on in our heads that, we're, that have become so normalized for us that we don't even question it yeah. until you actually start sitting with a professional and they can point those things out. Yeah. You feel me? And so what I'm trying to say is that when you actually get into sessions with a dope therapist, you start to realize things that aren't conducive to getting you to where you actually want to get to. Mm -hmm. Even outside of, oh, I'm dealing with my relationship issues or I have this thing that's bothering me. You start to get deeper and, and understand like, OK, yes, that's bothering me. But also these are some underlying subconscious beliefs that I have that have been actually keeping me from where I want to get to. That's what really happened for me yeah. as well. I started getting in therapy and I, and I told this uh, story on a previous episode, I think it was with Star Jella. I was talking about how when I got into therapy, um, I at first got into therapy for because I wanted to make relationships work. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was dealing with some relationship issues. I had had two relationships that didn't work out the way I wanted them to work out. And I was like, yo, I'm not, I'm, something is wrong right now, right? Like I'm not, I'm not seeing something and I don't understand what it is. Let me talk to somebody. And I started talking, started realizing like, yo, you got issues with like parental wounds. You have issues with your, your self-confidence. You have issues with where you feel like you're not enough as an individual. You try to overcompensate in certain areas. You take things too personal. You take, you like, you feel like people are attacking your, I'm realizing all this just because, you know, you see, yeah. like, I can go on and on, right? Yeah. All of this just because I'm going into therapy for one thing, right? And I started unraveling all these other things that have helped me to change um, how I view myself and what I do, which has helped me in so many different facets of my life. Yeah. You feel me? But if you continue to, believe that you know what I'm good I ain't got nothing wrong with me I'm perfect everything's straight and all these years that you've been on earth you don't feel like you don't got anything that you can work on bro you must be Jesus <laughs> it's kind of like um when you go to therapy the therapist helps gives you things that you need but you're coming in there for things that you want mm. so that's why you know relationship issues we want a healthy relationship we want the wife we want the great sex. We want all of that yeah, stuff, yeah, right? Yeah. So, say it again. Say so, it again. So we want the great sex. Yeah, if it's it not again. happening, <laughs> <laughs> if it's not happening, we uh -huh. like I go. I'm going to therapy. Help me mm -hmm. get the girl. Help me get all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Therapist, like, bet I got you, but. Really, the therapist is helping you with all the other stuff that you need mm -hmm. so that you can get, get what you that. want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I love that. I love that. I People love not that. going to therapy because they're like, yeah, my mom was not that great to me. They're not saying that initially. Yeah, Usually, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah they're yeah. saying, hey, I had this divorce, man. She took me to the cleaners. Like, mm -hmm. I'm struggling. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's true. We have some men at Safe Haven like that right now. Yeah. Anytime I see a man that joins Safe Haven, he's like, yo, we in the middle of a divorce or we're about to get a divorce <laughs> or we had it that way. I'm always like, damn, bro. And we have a safe haven here. I just talked with him. I won't reveal his name, just, mm -hmm. you know, out of respect for him. But he was telling me how he went through divorce and he's going through it. And I was like, yo, this is dope. Now I know, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying you have to talk about it in session, but I know you've personally been through it. That's important. You know what I'm saying? Having somebody yeah. that has personally been through the things that you've been through is very important because now you can connect with the emotions that I'm... And of course, as a therapist, that's what you guys are supposed to do. Yeah. But it's different when you've been through the experience. Oh, yeah. I haven't been through it, <laughs> luckily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but mm -hmm. seeing it, mm -hmm. 
it, it like flips people life upside down. I mean, I know it's like on the top two or three lists of, you know, most tragic events, you know, losing. Really? Yeah, divorce. I think divorce might be one, number one and losing a, a parent, a parent yeah. maybe like number two. You know, it, oh, they're up there yeah. in that top three for sure. Yeah. But man. when you see it, like, and you see how it really rocks somebody. Yeah. Man, I've been through a breakup Damn, and I was that, rocked. Exactly. So you know imagine. I was hit. Imagine a divorce. A divorce is like, brother. And don't well, let it be like kids involved. Oh, most of the your, times that yeah. your financial status is changing, bro. Your identity because you talked about it earlier. You feel like you failed. Mm -hmm. Now you gotta you gotta live with this. It's everywhere when you like fill out all these applications. Are you married, single? You know what I mean? Like yeah, they ask yeah, you that yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my so it's gosh, a reminder. man. Yeah, consistent. So my mm -hmm. my my you know my heart goes out to all of the brothers that are going through it. I'm um, experiencing it, you know. Uh, wish y'all nothing but the best. If y'all are interested, again, you know, pull up to the webinar. We can help you find someone that can help you with that. Um, but yeah, don't, don't, definitely don't, don't give up on on people. Don't give up on yourself. There's a process that you can go through to make sure that you're okay on the other end of this, uh, for sure. So let's 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 on a brighter side. <laughs> yeah. You feel me? On a brighter side, let's talk about some of the brothers that you've worked with. Do you have any? success stories and i love to ask this question um because obviously i'm not working with them on an individual level so right. i don't really see some of the transformations unless we're in groups together and i see like okay yeah you yeah. definitely changed since you've been in this group so do you have and you don't have to say any names right obviously. right but, yeah on a high level yeah. i can think of like one brother i was working with um one they were consistent. Mm -hmm. They were consistent, mm -hmm. and that's one thing that you need. Mm -hmm. So they were coming in, you know, self confidence, self doubt issues, mm -hmm. weren't really happy where they were at in their professional life. Mm -hmm. So once we started to uncover, like, where was this stemming from? Mm -hmm. Where was the lack of consistency in your life? We were able to kind of get to some of those core issues, mm -hmm. and they took one accountability. So they had awareness. They had awareness of the situation, mm -hmm. and then they took accountability, saying, "Look, I got to start working on me." And then they started to take action, and the mm -hmm. action looked like the affirmations, the manifestation, the mindset blocks. We were repairing that, mm -hmm. and then in their career, they were able to do some really amazing things mm -hmm. and be consistent with those things that they hadn't been able to do before. Mm -hmm. So that was dope. You know, mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur. It's tough, right? Yeah. You can go through all types of ups and downs in comparison, but we were able to go from weekly, bi-weekly, oh, to monthly, through, oh, through the whole transition. to I don't even see them no more. Oh, yeah, yeah. I <laughs> love it, bro. I love it. And you oh, can tell what is about to happen because it's like, Sessions start getting like a little bit shorter. You trying to yeah. like everything good, and they mm -hmm. they didn't checked off all the stuff they want to. You know, came in yeah, on the yeah. intake and all that. So, mm -hmm. man, one of the things I love, um, I'm so glad you mentioned that. You know, you you guys went through the whole process up until graduation. Yeah, one of the things I love to talk about, and I don't talk about enough, is graduation. You know, graduating. Don't yeah, graduating <laughs> from sessions because people don't be consistent enough a lot of the time. Right. Right. Graduating from sessions, right? A lot of black men have the misconception that if you start talking with a professional, that you're gonna be talking with a professional for the rest of your life. <laughs> and that they're only there to make sure that you stay there. And it's like yeah. like, bro, what? You know, first of all, the demand for black therapists is so high that you can be replaced in the next five minutes. There's every, almost every black therapist I know has a wait list or can get access to mm -hmm. clients if they want to, right? And so that's just out of ignorance. People just don't really know, understand the field. Um, but I'm so glad you mentioned that you guys worked through graduation and that there was consistency there and that's what helped to get there because a lot of black men don't hear that enough and I feel like that can be a block for them starting sessions, thinking that they're gonna be in there forever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If that's not the case. The what m every therapist wants you to graduate. Now, the 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 rate in which you graduate is dependent on both of you guys. Right. But more so, if I'm gonna be honest, more so on the client, because I feel like you have to do a lot of work outside of of those sessions to make sure that you're you're actually growing mm -hmm. and healing. Right. So yes, um, you're going to have to go through a process before you get to graduation. 
But you not being consistent is not going to help. And you also coming in with the idea that it should take a certain amount of time. Oh, yeah. People, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, that part. It's not going to help as well. Can you speak to that? Because I yeah, know you've dealt people, with that. Yeah. yeah, people always ask, like, how long is this going to take? And, mm -hmm. you know, people want to rush stuff, especially men. Mm -hmm. I think when I was working a lot with women, they would kind of, like, flow with the process. They will submit to the process. Yeah, that's a very that's that's important. They really wouldn't ask that question, like, like men do. Mm -hmm. Men like, how long is this going to be? Mm -hmm. You know, because they like, I guess because we just think more black and white. Mm -hmm. So we have to, you know, as, as therapists, we have to do a good job of explaining, like, we want y'all to get better. It's like anybody who loves what they do. You want to see the end result of your work. If you paint a house, you want to see that house finished and painted so you can look back and say, dang, that was dope. Yeah. yeah. If you're always seeing me every week and, and no progress, then at some point I'm like, dang, yeah, it's cool, but like it's not. I'm not getting that full result that even I want to see for you. Right, 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 right. So right, when right. people graduate, especially when it's like a, a planned out, okay, schedule this, start spacing things out. For us, it feels amazing. Yeah, as opposed to people either like just dropping off, ghosting, mm. popping in only in crisis. Yeah, one of the yeah. things, man. Um, that we had to get better at as men is submitting to pr the process, submitting to not having full control, mm -hmm. right? Because when you when you seek out a therapist, essentially what you're saying is, I need help. Yeah. And I don't think a lot of us understand what comes with that. When you say you need help, that means you don't have full control. Right. And we have to be comfortable with understanding that we don't have full control and yeah. submit to that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And if we don't, there's going to be friction, mm -hmm. right? Then we're going to come in. Yo, how long is going to take? Oh, <laughs> man, it's taking too long. Nah, I got to do this. I got to do that. Nah, bro, what you need to do is submit to the process. You feel but me? But it's like kind of like when you go to the dentist, right? If you're going on your regular every, uh, what, twice a year, mm -hmm. you're going to be good. But when you stop going... And then they're like, oh, we need to get you back in because you got this, you got that. Mm -hmm. And then you, now you need a whole new mouth because you ain't been taking care of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, you like. The it, root canals yeah, coming in. The root canals me? and yeah. the, the, the partials, all of that. Yeah. That's because you have not trusted somebody to say, look, you need help. Yeah. Now you can be on a maintenance schedule, but you're not there yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> then they end up getting the Chip Skylarks. Exactly. You know, you know what the Chip Skylarks are? The veneers? Oh, the veneers. That's <laughs> <laughs> man, we were just talking about the veneers. Nah, let yeah. me stop. Let me stop. I don't mess with people. You know, I ain't going to lie, son. Listen, man, if, that, if that's what you're into, look, I ain't got no problem with it, man. Do what oh, you feel like man. is going to make you the most, you know, most happy with yourself. As long as you're not hurting yourself or hurting anybody else, man, for sure. Man. This has been a really, really good conversation, bro. Yeah, man. Uh, it's been yeah, good. man. It's this good. has been a really good conversation. I have one. Uh, I have one more thing that I want to, you know, I want to hit on. Um, there's a lot of men that are listening to it, listening to this. They're right on the edge. They're like, you know what? I don't know. I think I need it, but I don't know. Yeah. Right. What would you say to those dudes that are hesitant about seeking out the help? I'm gonna say what what my uh, mentor would tell me when I was going through stuff. How if I'm just trying to do it and I'm bumping my head, he would say, how's that working out for you? <laughs> Seriously, it mm -hmm. would be really, like, cut, kind of like, how's that working out for you? Mm -hmm. You say you want a healthy relationship. The stuff you're doing is not working. You cheating, she's cheating, or you're not talking. You know, there's verbal stuff going on. How's it working out? Mm -hmm. So you got to be honest with yourself and ask yourself, can I get to where I want without getting help? If you can, like you said, don't don't join Safe Haven. Or don't mm. seek out a black male therapist. Mm. But if you really want something to change in your life, get the help, man. Mm. Like I said, it's changed. I know having different supports, it definitely changed my life mm. for, for sure. Bro. I'm, Hands down. I'm telling you, I always tell people, one of the best investments I ever made in my life mm -hmm. and what sparked a lot of this journey with Express Yourself Black, man, was getting into therapy with a black therapist, right? That changed the whole fabric of my life. Not only my life, but also the lives of the people around me. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like, we don't talk about that enough. 
Jason Wilson has this quote or this phrase. He always he says that, you know, we always talk about generational curses, mm -hmm. but we don't talk enough about generational healing, mm -hmm. passing that down as well. Because when you start to heal, you start to change the patterns and behaviors of not only yourselves, but your, the people around you. And now you're passing down different learned behaviors that are not only helping you, but everybody in your family and your so and your networks. And so I think we don't understand the ripple effects that we ha as an individual can have on the people around us. And I think that's very, very important. Just like somebody yeah. being quote unquote unhealthy or toxic can, you know, uh, pass that on to other people. Somebody healing and going through their healing journey can also help other people and pull them into that as well. So I think it's very important to understand that concept. So if you're on the edge, uh, you're on the edge for a reason. That's what I always say to people. It's like, if you're on the edge, if you're even thinking about it, that means you need to be doing it. Yeah. You know sure. what I'm saying? Like, you're not thinking about something that you shouldn't do, right? Like, you're, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, if you're contemplating, it, um, like, yeah. Like, the stages of change. And I'll break mm. it down. Are you familiar with it? No, please break so it down. So, real quick. Mm -hmm. So, the stages of change is when you are on the fence about making a decision. Mm hmm and you need to know, or like the therapist, we need to know what stage are you in. So there's pre-contemplation. That's when you're not even thinking about it at all. Mm -hmm. You're not, you have no awareness that something needs to change. Contemplation, you start to think about it, but you're really not sure if you want to do something. Mm -hmm. Then you get into preparation. That's when you start kind of like with the gym. You may be looking at memberships. So you're trying to figure out, okay, do I, do I want to do this or not? Then when you make the, uh, the step, that's action. Mm. And then the last stage is maintenance. Mm. And again, I know we want to get into maintenance, but you got to go through those other steps first before you can land there. Mm. But just knowing what stage you're at, that's going to help you go from this place to that place. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Man, thank you for that breakdown, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most yeah, this, is, this, has been, this has been a powerful, powerful episode, bro. Yeah. First of all, before we end, can you tell the people where they can find you? All oh, that good yeah, stuff, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Instagram, all my social media at J Phillips MSW, mm -hmm. my own podcast, yeah, Peace yeah, yeah. and Prosperity yes. Podcast, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and my website, jasonlphillips.com. Okay, man. Yeah. And again, Jason is a safe haven healer. You're not accepting new clients right not now. Not right now. Not right now. My man is booked up. Obviously, <laughs> he does a good job with what he does, but we have a slew of other black therapists, both male and female that can help you whatever it is that you're going through whether it be anxiety depression uh relationship issues breakups divorce um confidence whatever you name it right we got it right and so um if you're interested in finding a black therapist we are teaching a free webinar like i said earlier in the podcast we will take you through the steps that you need to make sure that you're finding a therapist that can help you a therapist that's dope that's skilled in the things that you need help in right and so if you're looking for that type of support you're looking for something that can help you with that process join the free webinar the link is in our bio on instagram it's also on our website express yourself blackman.com slash links and it'll be in the description of this podcast we'll take you through the steps um, and if you're interested and you're ready that day we will connect you with a safe haven healer that can help you with whatever it is that you're specifically going through right so um that's what we do we're very good at it, right? Yeah. Obviously, based on, you know, we got Jason Jason in here who's helping men to transform and get to different steps in their lives and they're graduating. I didn't even know they were graduating. Yeah. So that's <laughs> that's dope um, to hear. So definitely, definitely tap in. We're doing the work. Uh, man, Jason, man. it's been a pleasure, bro. This has been a dope, dope conversation, bro. I appreciate I excited, you so much, bro. man. Appreciate it, Thank man. you so much, bro. Definitely, definitely. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the Express Yourself Black Man podcast. We really hope you gained some valuable insight on things you could do differently with your healing journey and with the black man in your life. If you found value in this episode, please, please, please leave us a review on whatever platform you listen or watch the podcast on. Your review is a free and easy way to support us and it helps us reach more people like you. We're on a mission to build a stronger, more connected black community starting with black men and you can help us on that mission by taking a minute to leave a review your review helps us generate more listeners which in turn generates more revenue allowing us to expand our platform even further and speaking of expansion we're in the middle of that process right now with the black man safe haven we're expanding the safe haven platform to add more benefits so we can continue to support the demand we've received from this audience 
During this time, we've paused enrollment to Safe Haven, but we invite you to sign up for the wait list. Safe Haven is our holistic healing platform where we take the stress out of the healing journey for black men. In Safe Haven, we provide you or the black man you know with access to a black mental health professional so you can finally heal from the things you find it difficult to talk about and you will receive support from over 200 black men that are all on their healing journey so you don't have to heal alone anymore. You'll also get access to weekly meditations led by wellness experts, support group sessions led by black therapists, a library of over 200 articles geared towards black men's healing, master classes, and more. You can join the Safe Haven waitlist right now by going to www.expressyourselfblackman.com slash safe dash haven dash waitlist or by clicking the link in the description of this podcast episode. Don't wait. Do not wait. We've had hundreds of signups for Safe Haven already and we'll be opening enrollment soon. Due to capacity, we may not be able to service everyone. So don't hesitate to sign up now to secure your spot or the spot of a black man you know as soon as enrollment opens. Thank you again for listening to the Express Yourself Black Man podcast. We'll be back soon with more dope episodes. And until then, take care of yourself first, then the people around you. Love y'all. Sometimes I know you feel like you ain't got nobody to speak to. Your shoulder to lean on somebody you could preach to. No, you need to hear it, my brother. I love you. We got way too much to live for.